from one of the newest circuits in Rallycross, Silverstone, to one of the oldest. We're at Lyndon Hill in Kent in the sunshine on Easter Monday for this second round of the Toyo Tyres MSA British Rallycross Championship. And it's going to be a great day. The circuit, this usual mix of the tarmac and the gravel, 40% gravel includes a joker lap and it's a fast circuit. At Silverstone last time out, we were blessed with a number of the drivers for the World Championship, braving the elements and learning about an all-new circuit. Also new to the entry, the likes of Mark Higgins and Roger Thomas, but Sebastian Lowe, fresh from Rally Mexico, was the overall winner. The WRX drivers, though, not eligible for points, and that means that Julian Godfrey took maximum British points. He leads ahead of Steve Hill. Qualifying one underway, good getaway by Ollie O'Donovan nearest us, but on the inside line and going for the conventional route is Julian Godfrey. O'Donovan goes for the joker lap as they turn their way through that loose section for the first time. Julian Godfrey in the new to him for this season. Mitsubishi Mirage leading the way. Mark Higgins, former British rally champion, now moving to rally cross, has a look up the inside. And although we have the sunshine this morning, it is now slippery on track again. And off the road goes Godfrey and he loses the lead. He almost loses the lot because he slides his way back onto the tarmac. Up Harry Hill, through the hairpin in third place, making a welcome return, Ollie Bennett. He missed Silverstone through illness. He's not necessarily doing the whole season. He has his sights on a World Championship programme. But he comes onto the loose for the first time through Paddock. Wide goes Higgins. You've got more space to play with these days, gone than the days of that rather imposing Mabs bank on the outside, but Higgins onto the loose, it's slippy, but it's still fast through here. To the left is where the joker lap blends back in, and that is where Ollie Bennett goes. It's slower, it's tighter, and he's taking Mike Manning with him there, you can see behind, in that Subaru. It's good to have Mike Manning back in British Rallycross as the two race leaders run together out of the devil's elbow. Up the hill now, it's a steep climb this. Higgins it is, who leads the way in the Albatech Racing run car. And this is the view on board as he plunges downhill now. Higgins turning his way through Paddock, and there is Julian Godfrey then in the Mitsubishi, chasing after the Peugeot up front. Again, wide goes Higgins, the car bouncing its way through the chicane, back onto the tarmac. He gets the line for the corner, wider behind him though, Ollie O'Donovan there in the Ford Focus, launching himself over the curb, and Ollie Bennett's in real strife, he's off the road. That's Godfrey, serving the joker lap now. Five times a British champion, new car for him this season, the ex-James Grint Mitsubishi Mirage. It's going nicely though, and of course he took maximum points at Silverstone, and Liam Duran's return to the British Championship is not going well. Broken suspension, Bennett's off the road, and there was smoke from Mike Manning's car as well, so all of a sudden a number of the real gun drivers are having problems. Mark Higgins starts his last lap, and I fear that Mike Manning ain't going to get to the chequered flag either. Higgins leads, Higgins is wide at Chessons, and he's off the road! Disaster has struck the race leader. Mark Higgins goes off. The marshals almost can't believe what they've witnessed as they hunt for the yellow flag. And Higgins now has got to find a gear, dig himself out of the tyres, and get going again. The yellows are waving all the way around the lap because there are more parked cars, more drivers in trouble, so Ollie O'Donovan leads the way up the hill. And Mark Higgins makes a mistake, don't forget, even with all his years of experience and success in rallying and now stunt driving, Rallycross is still quite new, only an outing in RX150s before this season. So he's still learning, Ollie O'Donovan though comes through as race winner. Over the line he goes, second is going to be Julian Godfrey. And Mark Higgins, a little red-faced, I fear, is heading for third place over the line. We're ready for race two in Q1 as the lights go green and a good start by Steve Hill from the back of the grid. Elbows his way up alongside Kevin Proctor. They lean on each other. Proctor gets up the grass, but Steve Hill says, I'm coming through, Kev. Get out of the way. The Mitsubishi then up one spot and now they serve the joker lap. And as they do so, Jake Harris and Roger Thomas, the other two drivers in the race, blast away. Missing Mad Mark and Andy Grant as well. Andy Scott was meant to be in this race and he's sadly also a non-starter. So that leaves the way clear for Jake Harris then in the family Citroen to lead the pack. Up he comes towards the happy, but he goes wide into the corner. Roger Thomas running behind him. Of course, he's moving from retro rally cross into the supercars this season, and his Ford Focus going nicely. He's still learning, he's still developing, but he went well at Silverstone. Kevin Proctor, look at the background though, he's up now ahead of Hill as they come down through Paddock. Now those two 
have already served and caused the joke a lap so they can carry on to the end. Ollie O'Donovan, fastest in the first race in Q1 on a 3.16.9. That's the time they've got to beat. Roger Thomas goes now for the joke a lap. And he will fall to the back of the pack. Proctor, though, is getting away from Steve Hill. The road is getting a little bit drier, but as you can see from Hills on board, it is still quite slippy and there's still a bit of spray being thrown into your face. Even allowing for the rain, it's still warmer than it was at Silverstone for the Arctic opener. There, Kevin Proctor, touch of understeer as he goes through the hairpin. Time split this season between his own competition and looking after daughter Matilda, who is in the junior championship. Proctor then comes down towards Paddock, trying to make amends for a poor season last year. Steve Hill's ever-improving Mitsubishi comes through. Onto his last lap, Jake Harris then. He is the race leader. Is he going to be able to hang on to the race lead as Proctor and Hill have already jokered? Proctor will go up the inside and take the lead of the race and up to second will go Steve Hill. So Kev the Rev, Kevin Proctor, the man who lives up near Croft, the next venue on the BRX calendar, he leads the way. But can Proctor now go quicker than O'Donovan? The time that he's got to try to beat is a 3 minute 16.9. The clock ticks on. This is Proctor out of Paddock. Up towards the timing line, he's going to win the race, and a 3.15.3.5.1 means he's fastest in Q1. A lively start to the day, Kevin Proctor fastest at the end of Q1, ahead of Ollie O'Donovan and then Julian Godfrey. Steve Hill fourth from Jake Harris, and Mark Higgins down in sixth after his moment. Ollie, a dramatic Q1 race there, but you kept going and scored a race victory. What happened to you? Yeah, we had a good start, Hal. We had a good choker off the start. was quite happy with everything else. I think on lap two, I touched the barrier on Chessons. And immediately after that, I had a bit of smoke and a bit of dash fire coming from underneath the dash. So we kept going. Had a bit of a conversation with Tony. We decided we'd keep going. And um, it just came our way in the end. We got to the end. The fire seemed to have settled itself. It died out. The first race in Q2 had Steve Mundley starting on pole position. He was slow out of the blocks and Liam Duran made a demon start and he led on the way down towards Chessons for the first time. Ollie Bennett decided to get the Joker out of the way early on. But with a small grid of cars, this was going to be all about Duran as Mundley in the new built Fiesta had a big, big slide. He was able to carry on, but it wasn't the only drama he had in the course of the race. Transmission issues being a real problem for the new car. It was all fishtail as he got back on the power and Monday had a real magic roundabout job, facing the wrong way yet again. So, with a clear road ahead of him, Duran, on his home circuit, pushed on. Rallycross Grand Prix winner, former competitor in the World Championship, and he powered his way downhill towards Paddock. Ollie Bennett launched himself up the kerb, and having got the joker out of the way, the question was whether he would be able to catch Duran before the end. Steve Mundy is in the drama. Duran blasted his way over the timing line, down towards the joker lap. The longer lap, the slower lap, hard on the brakes, and turned right and then left through that purpose-built chicane. Back onto the loose, speed building once more. It was looking good for a race win, but ultimately the time was what was going to be significant. And of course, with limited opposition here, Duran hadn't been wasting any time in order to battle against his rivals. That put him in the box seat as far as Q2 was concerned. He accelerated his way up towards the line, the clock stopped at 3 minutes 6.520. That's the target then for this gang of drivers for the second race in Q2 that gets underway and it's Julian Godfrey who is away best of all on the outside line. O'Donovan goes for the joker, jinx to the left and avoids any contact. You've got some cars going right, some going left and sometimes whatever your plan is about the joker lap you are dependent on how the traffic opens up ahead of you. So, O'Donovan drops back in the field. This is on board with Mark Higgins, charging up past Godfrey. Was it Godfrey or was that Proctor? Let's just check. The cars turned their way out of the devil's elbow. I fear it might have been Kevin Proctor, in fact, who slowed right down there. It's Steve Hill just ahead of Higgins, and as they come through, yes, Julian Godfrey leads the way. So, Proctor it is who has slowed right down, and I think has come to a stop, in fact. Kevin Proctor in trouble in this second qualifying race for the supercars. They've worked their way across the loose out of paddock. So Steve Hill in the midst of issue, which again is showing good pace. He goes for the conventional route. Higgins Jokers, which was his undoing in the first qualifying race. Ollie O'Donovan, having already done so, he's going to try and gain a position against him as back onto the loose comes Higgins and he falls behind O'Donovan, but he stays ahead of Jake Harris there behind him through the devil's elbow. Godfrey leading, second is Hill, third now is O'Donovan, the best of those that have jokered ahead of Mark Higgins here. Higgins, remember, is new to Rallycross full-time this season. 
And it's part of a long-term project for both British and you never know, maybe even a world assault. Jake Harris right up behind him, but the door is not open. So that means that Harris can't find a way through. Godfrey looking really strong though up front. Downhill they come and then across the loose at Paddock where Ollie O'Donovan is giving Steve Hill a really hard time. With two laps to run, Hill goes for the Joker, through which goes Julian Godfrey. Now can Godfrey hang on to the race lead? Yes, he can. This is O'Donovan's view. He's got the momentum. But Julian Godfrey keeps the race lead. Mark Higgins there, look third. The Albertech Racing Peugeot hunting him down. Mark Higgins' car run by the National Centre for Motorsport Engineering, based up in Bolton. And the car now accelerates its way towards the hairpin. This is Higgins' view, hard on the brakes. Brake as late as you dare see how much of the kerb and even the grass on the inside the drivers are trying to use now to shorten the lap so the four leaders very close indeed Jake Harris there at the back of the pack with a little puff of tar smoke as he locks up comes onto the loose they're going to start the last lap this time and it's still up for grabs look at the speed carried as they fly their way over the line all of them on the loose this time at Chesson's Drift Julian Godfrey he took maximum points at Silverstone and he's leading here Still learning about the new car, but he's adapted to it very well, forsaking his regular Ford Fiestas. Up now towards the left at the Devil's Elbow, he turns. Higgins is starting to breathe down the neck of Ollie O'Donovan. The Tony Bardi run, Ford Focus comes now up towards the hairpin, down through the gears, hard on the brakes. The car almost hops there as O'Donovan stabs at the throttle of the brake through the corner. The chequered flag is at the ready. Now remember, Liam Duran did a 3 minute 6.5. That still looks like it's going to be hard to beat here, even in this company over the line. It's a race win for Julian Godfrey. O'Donovan second, Higgins third and Harris fourth. But Liam Durant fastest in Q2. Roger Thomas will come home there in the Ford Focus. So Julian Godfrey takes the chequered flag as the race winner. The confirmation of the Q2 results. Liam Durant the fastest from Julian Godfrey and Ollie O'Donovan. Mark Higgins is fourth quickest from Ollie Bennett and then Jake Harris. Lyndon Hill in Kent is the venue for the second round of the Toyo Tyres MSA British Running Cross Championship. Q3 underway with a good getaway made by Steve Mundy from the front. And up against him is Mad Mark in the Citroen who has missed both Q1 and Q2 because of a fuel leak. Mike Manning is behind him in the Subaru and those two have had some good battles over the years with Mad Mark Citroen against, at the time, Mike Manning's Ford Puma in the days of the Rallycross Open Championship. But now they're on the British scene once again and Steve Mundy with this newly built Fiesta. He's had transmission dramas across the course of the morning. He leads the way. Mad Mark in the XLR on Tarantown Citroen. The ever spectacular Mad, Mad Mark livery, resplendent on the side of the car with a bonnet lifting, heads up now towards the hairpin and tries to duck to the inside line against Mundy as they plunge downhill here. The Fiesta leads the way and onto the loose they come then for the first time. Is Steve Mundy going to be on target here for a race win? Let's see. These are the slower drivers, all the unlucky drivers out of Q1 and Q2 something flapping under the front of his Citroen. Mad Mark then turns his way for the Joker lap now. Hard on the brakes, turn sharp right. Now that gives Mike Manning a chance to go for the race lead because he puts himself up onto the tail of Steve Mundy. A Fiesta is ahead as they work their way into the Devil's Elbow this time. And flame out of the back. The car suddenly slows. Mike Manning goes by. And the former autograsser then picks up the race lead, two-wheeling his way into the hairpin. Steve Mundy is still going despite that flash of flame out of the back of the car. The pace, though, is somewhat affected, is it not, as he comes downhill. Mad Mark's in the background there. Across the loose they come. Mike Manning using all of the road, all of the width there. He's back onto the tarmac. And again, some cars in the supercar class, the Subaru looking almost standard. He works his way in the Impreza through that very tight chicane and Steve Mundy will go back ahead, will he? Yes, and Mad Mark takes over the lead of the race in real terms because don't forget he jokered early on. So Mad Mark it is leading the way then as the cars now head through the Devil's Elbow. And fingers crossed the fuel leak drama has gone for the Hotelier. There is Mad Mark up towards the hairpin. He's been a tremendous supporter of Rallycross through some dark days even. And he always adds, in so many ways, a certain colour to the paddock. He heads in towards paddock this time. And not only is he ahead of Mike Manning, he's getting away from him as well. So the Citroen now looking quick. Steve Mundy starts his last lap. 
he will joker and that will put Mad Mark into the lead except he's not gone for Chessons. Mad Mark has gone for a second joker lap. But why is this? That's going to give Mike Manning a win, isn't it? Because he will get past the pair of them. They're going to be side by side across the loose. Steve Mundy gets all sideways on the outside line. So Mike Manning takes over the race lead. And he comes up now towards the devil's elbow, clear in the lead of the race. And again, look at all that flame that comes out of the back and even sets the ground alight from Steve Mundy's Fiesta. Up towards the hairpin he goes with Mad Mark, having enjoyed the Joker lap so much. He's there behind him now in third place, serving it twice. He's going to make a move on the inside as they head down the hill. Mad Mark will go second. But Mike Manning it is on target for a race win as he comes up towards the chequered flag. Mike Manning in the Subaru wins the first race in Q3 for the supercars. The second supercar race of Q3 has Liam Duran on pole position alongside him, Julian Godfrey, then Ollie O'Donovan. The lights will go to green now. It is blast off and Duran goes nowhere and Ollie Bennett makes a slow start as well. Ollie O'Donovan for the joker. Contact between Godfrey and Mark Higgins. Off the road goes Julian Godfrey. Barriers fly, the car slides over the grass. Replay on board with Higgins. He's committed to the gap on the inside. Godfrey comes across. There's nowhere he can go. So high drama right from the start. Does that put Julian Godfrey out of the race? There's Bennett back up and running. O'Donovan after the joker drops down the order, but it'll all uncycle, of course. Up the hill goes O'Donovan. Now there is Steve Hill. He's got Liam Duran after his dreadful start behind him, desperately trying to play catch up. Now they come in towards Paddock. Duran flings the car sideways, looking for a clear bit of room that he can then use the acceleration and the traction of the Citroen to try to fly by. He goes for the joker lap this time, gets that out of the way relatively early in the race, hard on the brakes. Stands the car on its nose as Mark Higgins then comes through, Steve Hill behind him. There's Ollie O'Donovan who jokered early, Jake Harris behind him, so O'Donovan stays ahead of Duran, Ollie Bennett's behind him. Trying to keep tabs, of course, all the time on who has jokered and who hasn't. Up the hill, this is O'Donovan's view now. Now that little fire from the dash in Q1, he turns out now from the hairpin and accelerates downhill again. Mark Higgins looking very confident indeed, kicking himself for the mistake he made in the first qualifying races. He wants to put that to bed now. Jake Harris ahead of Liam Duran. The two of them blast over the line together as Steve Hill this time goes for the joker. And Mark Higgins assumes the race lead here. The most encouraging thing about all of this is the pace we're seeing out of Steve Hill's Mitsubishi. He has toiled for season after season with that car, but finally it is starting to look quicker and more reliable for him. He's keeping Ollie Bennett at bay. There's the fiesta of last year's championship runner-up. He did a great job last year, Ollie Bennett, in his first season of Rallycross. Missed Silverstone with illness. Hopefully we'll see more of him this year because he does have his sights on racing abroad. He comes up the inside and takes the place away from Steve Hill. Downhill they plunge as there Duran flips the car through the right hand of Paddock. Very wide he goes, loses momentum, loses time as well, crucially, but across the line he, he goes. Now that's Mark Higgins. The Manxman back onto the conventional circuit now and he stays ahead of O'Donovan. So Mark Higgins this time absolutely nails the Joker and he leads the way. O'Donovan is second. Jake Harris third, so Mark Higgins throwing down a marker here to the establishment in British Rallycross. I did my learning at Silverstone, he says, and now I'm very much a force to be reckoned with. This is O'Donovan's view, head downhill once again behind him, it's Harris, then in third place, fourth is Duran, fifth is Bennett, sixth is Steve Hill. Checkered flag at the ready. Mark Higgins comes through to take a race win, and he's the fastest in Q3 as well. Mark Higgins, fastest at the end of qualifying, with Ollie O'Donovan, the second driver ahead of Jake Harris, Liam Duran, Ollie Bennett, and Steve Hill comes next in this faster second race. So what does that do overall? O'Donovan heads the points from Mark Higgins and Julian Godfrey third, and Jake Harris impressively fourth ahead of Steve Hill, and then Liam Duran. Mark, second round in the MSA British Rallycross Championship, Q3, pretty good run? Yeah. Um... It's, we made a really silly mistake on the first one this morning, just made a mess of the joker lap, we had a good lead at the time. We've got to keep moving forward, keep learning, and um, hopefully have a good run in the final this time. 
Your first fastest time and it puts you on pole position for semi-final tour. Hopefully you can get a good start from there and, and lead from the front. Yeah, we, we've had some quite good starts. Uh, the one before then was our worst start so far, but uh, we're getting the hang of that now and uh, I know what the lights are doing without a co-driver. Oli, it's not been the easiest day for you, but consistency is paying off and you've qualified top at the intermediate for classification. What can you do from pole position in semi-final one? Well, Hal, we've been here before and we've got it wrong. <laughs> Uh, I suppose pole position is really as good as we could ask for. We've been keeping our nose clean all day, not doing anything out of the way. Driving fairly safe, so I think we try and stick to the same plan. If we finish, I'd be finished in the top two, I'd be happy. Mark, you had a tough first round at Silverstone, came here with high hopes and had another tough morning, but Q3 went well for you. Yeah, that was much, much better. We've had a real problem all day trying to fix a problem that w arrived in Silverstone going over the jump because I came down on my nose a bit of the car. Um, it spat an O-ring out. We thought we'd fixed it in between race meetings. Went to dyno yesterday, advanced, it was fine. And then this morning in practice, she was spitting oil everywhere. So uh, the guys have done a really good job of beaving away and, and fitting a new uh, rubber washer into the seal. Um, no problems there. And if I hadn't, if idiot here hadn't jumped the start, um, I would have won that one. But with two jokers, I thought it was going very, very well. The Super Nationals always give plenty of action. Paige Bellaby, quickest in Q1. Tristan Ovenden, quickest in two and three. As we get ready for the Super Nationals, it's Tristan Ovenden, three points clear of Jack Thorne after qualifying them. Paul Coney and Paige Bellaby, third and fourth. Phil Chicken and Guy Corner come next with the likes of Alan Tapp Scott with work to do. Semi-final one had opened an on-pole position and he blasted away to lead in the V6 Clio as the cars accelerated down towards Chesson's Drift for the first time. Some of the Super 1600s got the joker out of the way early on with Darren Scott being ahead of Craig Lomax. Mike Howden was battling with Paul Coney as the cars worked their way towards tarmac once more. Phil Chicken in the mix as well after a very disappointing time at Silverstone. Howling though was in strife down at Paddock, he ran wide all over the grass and as he came back on he clobbered Phil Chicken and Alan Tapscott did him head on. There was quite a lot of damage to Howling's car, Tapscott's Corsa also looked very second hand, the yellow flags flew and Mike Howling was going no further. The walking wounded battled on but Tristan Ovenden up front was looking mighty strong, the Clio well suited to the fast Linden circuit. Paul Coney, as ever, going strongly in Super 1600 and was chasing him hard. But for others, there was disappointment after Mike Howden's dramas down at Paddock. A race win then for Tristan Ovenden, the top four qualifying with Paul Coney going through ahead of Darren Scott and Craig Lomax. The ones that missed out, Phil Chicken, Thomas Wheelgosh with Alan Tapp Scott and Mike Howden suffering damage, also missing the cut for the main final. Semi-final two was going to be another race to watch because it would have the Silverstone winner Jack Thorne going up against Paige Ballady once again out in the borrowed Vauxhall VX220. Guy Corner and Vince Bristow got their joker laps out of the way early on and it was Ballady then that led across the loose for the first time with Slavomir Bolov also trying to stay in the mix. But Jack Thorne's amazing run at Silverstone was not to be replicated here because as the cars accelerated downhill, the Renault Twingo suddenly slowed and Jack Thorne peeled to one side, mechanical drama stopping him in his tracks. That enabled Paige Bellaby then to build up the advantage as Volop rode the kerb and broke the front right suspension. He skated across the grass and that was the Polish driver out on the spot. Bellaby led but still had to serve the Joker and the danger was that would drop her behind Guy Corner. Guy Corner, however, was ahead of her, and that put the Peugeot up front. Guy Corner showing good pace here, and he managed to get a good advantage as the cars worked their way through the Devil's Elbow. Vince Bristow's spectacular BMW next in the queue. Downhill towards Paddock. Corner clear of Bellamy. He would accelerate his way over the loose and back towards the tarmac. And Guy Corner took the checkered flag confirmed as the winner of the second semi-final ahead of Paige Bellaby in second spot and Vince Bristow coming through for third. Corner, Bellaby, Bristow and Twyman the four that qualify. John Cross just missing out with the Super National second semi-final.
here at Lyddon. We are ready for the first four-lap semi-final for the MSA British Rally Cross drivers. The top four go through. Ollie O'Donovan, Julian Godfrey, Steve Hill on the front row. Ollie Bennett, Steve Mundley on row two. Mad Mark at the back and it's blast off. Mundley gets a bad start. Down towards Chess as they go for the first time. For the joker lap, Godfrey and Hill, they go to the left through the right-hander of Chesson's Drift, go the rest of them, and Ollie O'Donovan, he's going to lead the way as he goes up through the gears now, speed building. Ollie Bennett second, Mad Mark runs third, spots of rain on the camera lens, we've had the sunshine, but the rain, I fear, is coming back, and back with a vengeance. After the Arctic conditions and the snow of Silverstone, it's wet and slippy at Lydon. Up towards the hairpin, hard on the brakes they go. Ollie O'Donovan leading Ollie Bennett. O'Donovan has not been without his dramas today, but he leads this semi-final and he's got to try and qualify for the final. He's got to be in the top four. That's now the real plan. Ollie Bennett quicker into paddock, has to dab the brakes to avoid clipping the back of the focus ahead of him. O'Donovan this time goes for the joker through Chesson's drift. Goes Ollie Bennett. So O'Donovan will slip back behind Bennett, but where will he rejoin relative to those that have already done the joker lap? Let's see. There he is, he's ahead of Julian Godfrey who's got the door flapping open. It's a new door as well because in Q3 he had a coming together with Mark Higgins and went off the road. The car has been repaired but the door catch not really fastening properly and so with his new air conditioning system Julian Godfrey heads up the hill ahead of Steve Hill. Hill looks to the inside, these two trying to catch Ollie O'Donovan. So O'Donovan after the joker is in real terms ahead. Let's see what happens when Ollie Bennett makes his joker lap. There he is going through. O'Donovan is next up, fending off Julian Godfrey. He's trying to drive the car, get that door closed if he can. Bennett for the joker. Is this going to cost him the race lead? Let's see. You're on board with O'Donovan and it's going to be close this. Bennett's just ahead on the outside and he leads the way. Back onto the tarmac, down the Dover slope they go. Bodywork about to drop from the rear of the Fiesta and a big, big whack. O'Donovan went for a gap that soon closed. He turns the Fiesta sideways but Bennett hangs on to the race lead. Heading now up towards the hairpin once again. Understeer through the corner, power out. O'Donovan slides out wide. Ahead of him is Bennett who stabs the brakes down to Paddock, flicks the car right. Balancing traction against power, comes across the loose, back onto the tarmac, and Ollie Bennett it is who wins the first semi-final. Ollie O'Donovan takes second ahead of Godfrey and Hill. They are going to be the qualifiers with just three tenths of a second between the Ford Fiesta and the Ford Focus at the very end. Mad Mark, the one that misses out. Ollie, you had every intention of competing at the first round, but you couldn't through illness. Back here today, good pace, and you won semi-final one. You must be feeling confident ahead of the final. Yeah, I'm glad to be here after being ill at Silverstone. So, yeah, I really enjoy this track. It's probably the track I've been around the most. So I was pretty confident coming into it with my pace and all, and then I guess it's luck on the day with Rally Cross, but it's going good so far, and the pace is definitely there for the semi, so. As ever, the cars in the MSA Junior Rally Cross Championship delivered bags of action. Marius Solberg Hansen fastest in Q1, Tom Constantine quickest in Q2 and 3. And he therefore is ahead on points coming into the final. Solberg Hansen second, Morgan Root is third. The grid forms for what is going to be a wet race. The grid has Tom Constantine on pole from Marius Solberg Hansen and then Morgan Root. James Constantine's on row two with Luke Constantine lining up alongside. Newcomers Ben Sayer and then Matilda Proctor are at the back of the grid. So wipers on, they scrabble away from the line with a slow start being made by Tom Constantine there. All of that wheel spin does not help and so the cars work their way down towards turn one at Chesson's Drift. Others go for the joker lap and get that out of the way. James Constantine ahead of Morgan Root and then behind look in 107. New to the championship this year is Tom's brother Luke Constantine. Side by side the race leaders come towards the slippery devil's elbow and it's Tom Constantine back through on the inside there. He goes ahead of Mario Solberg handsome. Tom Constantine has always been one of the leading lights in junior rally cross but he's only had one win amazingly that was at Croft in 2016. And here he comes up towards the hairpin. So now this is a real test. He wants the win. He's got to maintain concentration and he's got to do it, not only with everybody else breathing down his neck, but in these very challenging conditions. Towards Paddock they come for the first time. There is Mario Solberg Hansen, the Silverstone winner. Six laps the juniors get as they bounce their way out of Paddock. The finals, of course, longer than the heat. They climb up that big high curb. Ben Sayer going strongly as well. And then you can see Matilda Proctor running fourth and the next gaggle, those that have already done the joker lap. So James Constantine, Morgan Root, Luke Constantine, trying to play catch up now. 
John Constantine it is, however, who leads the way. All six foot five of him up front. And of course, without the perennial rival and problem of how to beat Tom Llewellyn for this season, Tom Constantine perhaps can become the man to beat instead. And he's doing a very good job of it at the moment, up towards the hairpin at the top of Harry Hill. Through the hairpin, Cole almost gets away from him. He catches the slide and powers out the other end. Heading down towards the right-hand at paddock this time. All of these cars, remember, the same type of Suzuki Swift. Junior Rallycross for many seasons was in the old mini shape, but this moves it on, advances the whole category, makes it a more modern structure. To the loose then at Chesson's Drift goes Tom Constantine. Behind him, Mario Solberg Hansen serves the Joker. Where will he blend back in relative to these three? There going through 120 is Matilda Proctor, the daughter of Kevin Proctor who's had all sorts of dramas today with the gearbox in his Ford Fiesta. Now there, Ben Sayer having jokered as well. He's about to lose out, I fear, to James Constantine because they're going to be side by side together. Sayer has the inside line down towards the devil's elbow. It is so slippery now offline. And of course, more and more dirt brought from the loose. And Sayer spins as he comes into the devil's elbow and off into the gravel. Round he goes. And that, sad to say, is the end of what was an encouraging performance from Ben Sayer. Of course, on a circuit like this where you've got the split between the gravel and the tarmac when it's wet more and more of the gravel is brought onto the tarmac that makes it slippery and Ben Sayer caught out going down towards the devil's elbow easy mistake to make but sadly it's a very costly one and somebody else in strife is Morgan Root way off the road he goes at paddock so Tom Constantine now gets the joker out of the way and is he going to be ahead when he comes back onto the circuit only just Mario Solberg Hansen is almost alongside him Nose to tail, they run. Back to the tarmac, half a lap to run, and now Tom Constantine may well have just done enough. Let's see, can he hang on to the advantage here? Uphill they go, wipers on. The track's so, so slippery, and Tom Constantine still under massive pressure by Solberg Hansen, who closes under braking, takes a wide approach, and then a tighter line through the corner. Is he going to be able to get up alongside? No, because in the rain here, Constantine sits in the middle of the road, preventing Mario Solberg Hansen from finding a gap to the right or the left. Across the loose at Paddock they come now. It looks like it is going to be a win for Tom Constantine. They're going to be nose to tail though as they flash up towards the line. Tom Constantine takes a second ever win in Junior Rallycross. Second goes the way of Mario Solberg Hansen and who is going to be third? Morgan Root, remember, had a big moment earlier on in the race, but he comes across the line now. Morgan Root fourth behind James Constantine, who is the last podium finisher behind Mario Solberg Hansen and Tom Constantine, it is victorious in round two of the MSA Junior Rallycross Championship. Mario Solberg Hansen, though, is four points to the good in the championship. Tom Constantine is second, three points ahead of James with Luke Constantine in fourth. You've scored your second championship victory. Must be pretty special. Yeah, it just feels great. You know, we've had a bit of a slow start to the season. We've had two fourth places in our first two races this season, but just seem to have the pace today. I'm not quite sure why. I suppose maybe experience played in a little bit, and with the weather deteriorating towards the final, I was a bit unsure how it was going to go, but yeah, I'm really happy. That was a pretty eventful final in the second round of the Junior Rallycross Championship. Happy with third place? Yeah, happy, consistently uh, getting third place at Silverstone and Lyndon, which will help my championship and maybe moving up to second or third. So, yeah, I'm happy. Semi-final two for the MSA, British Rally Cross drivers about to get underway. The top four go through, only four on the grid. We've lost Roger Thomas, so let's see how they finish as Mark Higgins blasts away and Liam Duran on the outside line is going to be the main rival to him. Duran and also Mike Manning go for the joker lap straight away. Get that out of the way, yet. then you can concentrate on trying to fight against these two, Mark Higgins and Jake Harris, who come across the loose and now hit tarmac for the first time. Mike Manning leaps over the brow there. Mark Higgins leads the way. Don't forget that Mark Higgins is new to Rallycross and new to this loneliness of being in a car on your own. No co-driver barking out the pace notes. It's all down to Mark Higgins now and he comes out of the hairpin towards Paddock. The former British Rallycross champion, stunt driver par excellence, turns his way through the loose at Paddock, gets sideways, kicks the dirt into the face of Jake Harris, who in fairness is an ever-improving driver. Season after season, he gets faster, and now he goes for the Joker lap and gets that out of the way. The Joker has this effect of really throwing up the order. 
Let's see where he will blend back in relative to those that have already done the Joker left. He's behind Liam Duran. So there you go. The shuffle comes. Duran is ahead. The question is whether he's going to be able to assume the lead once we get to Mark Higgins serving his Joker lap late in the race. Up Harry Hill they go. Higgins is through the hairpin. And there, Liam Duran in the Citroen C4 comes downhill now, looking strong. It's not the newest car on the grid, but it goes well. And Mark Higgins then for Albatech Racing. Blasts over the timing line and now for the Joker, which was his undoing at the start of the day. The ultra smart Peugeot 208 then turns its way right. Flick left on the power over the brow. Where's Duran? He's almost level with him. Here comes Higgins. He's got the speed and he's got the lead as well. Mark Higgins with the Joker lap still leads the way. Duran breaks very late, hooks the curb going through the devil's elbow, but Mark Higgins blocks him off. Great fight between these two, raging on in semi-final two. Turn through the hairpin. Wipers on. The road is still a bit slippy and downhill they head now. Duran up through the gears, hard on the brakes, down through the gears. Turn right at Paddock, across the loose, get sideways here. They dance their way across the loose onto the last lap of the race. Higgins clambers up the kerb and then goes for Chester's Drift right-hander. Hugs the inside line, making sure that Duran can't find a way through. Mark Higgins then, a big hit in the championship thus far. Brings an impressive CV from his rallying days. And he's got good pace here. And he's got the lead as well, and that is significant. Ahead of the more experienced in terms of rallycross, Liam Duran. To the hairpin they come, nose to tail. Up the inside goes Duran, bang! He hits the Peugeot. Doesn't dislodge Mark Higgins, who stands his ground. That's something that's new to him as well, of course, having cars all around him. Checkered flag at the ready, and Mark Higgins is going to win semi-final two. Liam Duran chases him home, and third place will go the way of Jake Harris, with Mike Manning being the other qualifier. Well done, Mark Higgins. He wins by just four tenths of a second. Here at Lydon for the Toyo Tyres MSA British Rallycross Championship, the Super National and Super 1600 final is about to get underway. Tristan Upperton, Guy Corner, Paul Coney, row one. Paige Bellaby is on row two with Vince Bristow for company. Darren Scott, Craig Lomax and Kurt Twyman at the back as the lights go green. Guy Corner struggles away from the line, but a good start by the local hero Tristan Upperton who leads down towards Chesson's Drift for the first time. Coney and Bristow plus Craig Lomax and Kirk Twyman go for the joker lap and get that out of the way on the opening lap and they can concentrate on playing catch up. It's up in the lead there now. It's a big powerful V6 Renault Clio that he has but in these conditions now will he have a surfeit of power? Is it going to be too powerful? Is it going to be a big handful for him? We'll find out as he powers his way up the hill. It's all looking good so far. Paige Bellaby running second in the Vauxhall VX220, another borrowed car for the weekend. She had to use this at Silverstone. The Lotus XC still not ready, her regular mount. In third place, Guy Corner. And then fourth, it's Darren Scott, who is the best so far of those in Super 1600 as they come downhill. They turn their way now up out of Paddock. Through the chicane, up the kerb they all go. And Tristan Oman and leading the way. You can see the spray being kicked up. Conditions are getting nasty here. Traction is at a premium and visibility as well, partly because you steam up inside and partly because of all the muddy water thrown into your face. Tristan Urbandon, though, is the best placed in terms of visibility. And there is Paige Bellaby chasing on behind in second spot. To the devil's elbow goes the Vauxhall. And you can see how much standing water there is. Guy Corner has fallen back behind Paul Coney, but the Peugeot attacks the Vauxhall Corsa. Coney leading a Super 1600 as the leader spins. Round goes up and down, and that puts Paige Bellamy into the lead of the race now. On board with Craig Lomax, up towards the hairpin. Guy Corner to the left, goes backwards a place. He loses one spot, and understeering Paul Coney comes back across the road and catches Craig Lomax. The two Super 1600s together then, the Vauxhall bouncing off the Citroen as they head into Paddock. So there is Darren Scott, he currently serves the Joker, he's within Super 1600. Remember what happened last time out at Silverstone, Jack Thorne spun and came back to win. Tristan Irvenden leading here, spins, can he come back to win? Jack Thorne not qualifying because of mechanical dramas early on in the day, Irvenden is way out wide at the devil's elbow as well now. Up through the hairpin goes Paige Bellaby. 
and Tristan Openden, despite the spin up at the top of the circuit, is fighting back impressively, isn't he? Downhill he comes now. Into paddock, great noise that Clio V6 makes, but the Vauxhall VX220 bouncing its way up the curb there. Paige Bellamy leads the way. Silverstone wasn't perfect for her. Is this going to be a better result? Let's see, she goes for the joker lap. Got to be so, so careful here, otherwise you slither straight off the road. So Tristan Uppenden goes back ahead. Paige Bellamy comes over that brow and stays ahead of the Super 1600 traffic. Craig Lomax is behind, and this is Lomax's view as he comes across the loose now. Down through the gears, hard on the brakes, go left at the Devil's Elbow. As they make the climb uphill, let's see whether Lomax is going to be near enough to make a move. There's no real gap on the inside yet, but perhaps coming out of the corner there will be. Bellamy goes wide, Lomax up the curve, they lean on each other. The boxy Super 1600 against the low-line sports car from Super National. Towards Paddock, Bellaby stays ahead. Now, Ovenden has got to get the joker lap done this time. Is that going to give Paige Bellaby the race lead? It could do. She's a bit busy, though, defending from Lomax. There's Ovenden going through the joker. Is he going to come out ahead as through Chess and Strip come Paige Bellaby and Craig Lomax? Putting Super National and Super 1600 together this year has been a good fit, and Ovenden still leads the way. He's back on track, and he's up front, so despite the spin, he leads, and he's on target for a win. Ovenden was the top super national runner at Silverstone. He didn't win the combined final, but he did take the points as the best of the super national drivers home, and he's going to do it again here, so it's looking good for him. The reigning champion, and Kurt Twyman's in trouble with the Clio. It's a far more standard-looking Clio than the ex-Jamie Bird car there you see in the hands of the race leader. Tristan Ovenden comes down towards Paddock, and a race win is his for the taking. Through he turns, up the kerb, it's going to be two from two. Tristan Ovenden wins at Lynn, second page, Bellaby, and third, it is Craig Lomax, the best of those in Super 1600. Paul Coney, fourth ahead of Guy Corner and Darren Scott. Vince Bristow comes home in seventh. So what does that do for the championship? Well, in Super National, the combined standings have Ovenden ahead of Coney, ahead of Lomax, but you isolate the Super 1600s, Craig Lomax is one point up on Paul Coney now. And you managed to pull away a bit at the front and uh, just come out of the joker at the end ahead of Page and Craig behind you. I did, but I thought I'd blown it at the top of the hill. I got in there too fast and was across the grass and then I thought, <laughs> just calm down and sort yourself out. And it worked out, yes, yeah, got the time back. So they had a difficult round one, it must be nice to fight back. Yeah, absolutely. We didn't come here again to it's expect to be on the podium either um, obviously working really hard to get the Lotus back on the track um, but really feels good to be back on top and yeah loved every minute. Craig fantastic result for you Super 1600 car against these high powered Super National cars a couple more laps you maybe could have got victory too. Yeah a couple more laps I definitely could have got victory I just had to back out I didn't want to ruin the Super Modified uh, final as well as my own uh, but coming from a background of racing on grass in mud and wet I think helped me today in the wet conditions and uh, the lads did a, a brilliant job today that it put me a few wet settings on it for the final and uh, it performed really well with the car. We're ready for the main event, the MSA British Rally Cross Championship Final. Six laps with Mark Higgins on pole, Ollie Bennett with him at the front and Ollie O'Donovan on the outside. Liam Durand shares row two with Silverstone winner Junior Godfrey, winner in terms of maximum points, Jake Harris, Steve Hill, Mike Manning at the back. It's go, Bennett gets a dreadful start. Steve Hill has to swerve around him. On board with O'Donovan, he will go for the Joker lap. Everybody else towards Chesson's Drift, well, no, because Ollie Bennett and Mike Manning, Joker as well. Higgins leads the way, Liam Duran tries to get up the inside of him. Duran and his home circuit up on the tail of the Manxman. There are the Jokers coming back onto the circuit. So you can see how much real estate they lose as Mark Higgins leads now, turning his way up through the Devil's Elbow, heading up Harry Hill. First of six laps here. Spray thrown into the face of Liam Duran. A very sideways Higgins goes out wide, door is left open, he comes back across the road. And there's just a bit of contact as Higgins snakes back in front of him. Liam Duran comes down towards Paddock. He took that whack on the left front, Higgins goes way out wide. Here comes Duran, this is his chance to challenge. A face full of mud, he's got broken suspension, look. Front left is broken and Duran's going to be out of the race. You saw a wheel wobbling. It's a legacy of the contact at the hairpin, so Higgins survives, he leads the way. But Liam Durant, with a broken front left corner, is out of the race. So Julian Godfrey goes up into second. From 
remember he took maximum points at Silverstone, the best of the British Championship registered drivers. It's Jake Harris running third and Ollie O'Donovan fourth. Now O'Donovan has already done the Joker lap, so he is going to be one to watch here to see whether he can close sufficiently to then assume the race lead when Higgins, Godfrey and others serve their Joker. Down to Paddock they come. This is Mark Higgins' view. Doesn't have to worry about Liam Duran behind him on this lap, so it's head down and concentrate. He can attack, he can push, he doesn't have to defend. Godfrey goes through in second spot. There for third is Jake Harris. He will joker, so O'Donovan will move ahead of him this time around. There is Julian Godfrey going through. Jake Harris slides his way across the loose. Ollie Bennett will get ahead of him. It was a bad start by Bennett, but he's responding and recovering well. Wide goes Jake Harris as he powers along the Dover slope now into the Devil's Elbow, and you can see how much standing water there is there. There have been moments of sunshine at Lincoln today, but it's a very treacherous track surface they've all got to cope with now. Up to the hairpin goes Harris, turns his way through the right-hander, Bennett ahead of him went wide, and Mark Higgins leads, but is Julian Godfrey just a fraction closer to him? Godfrey, hugely experienced in running cross terms, five times a British champion, super national champion as well. O'Donovan into Chesson's Drift, being chased by Bennett. There is Higgins, the leader. Nearly a second and a half for the good now over Julian Godfrey. Mark Higgins had a pretty challenging day at Silverstone, as did most in the conditions. Here, though, he has responded well from a mistake made in Q1, and he leads the final in only his second outing in supercars in British Rallycross. O'Donovan was wide into the gravel on the outside of the Devil's Elbow there. There's Mike Manning in the Subaru, adding welcome variety. Good to have the Welshman back in the championship. Steve Hill's got a problem. I've been saying all day how well the car is going, but when it matters, it's let him down. Sorry, Steve. The Mitsubishi coasts to Paddock. Mark Higgins comes across the line. He's looking good for a race win now. With O'Donovan having slithered wide last time at the Devil's Elbow, that will delay him. Godfrey gets the Joker out of the way now. And he's back on track. Where is he in relation to Ollie O'Donovan? He's ahead, but only just. Up through the gears goes O'Donovan now. The drivers here all the time coping with limited visibility and even with four-wheel drive, limited traction. The road is so, so slippery, of course, because you go off the track onto the grass, you bring that onto the road. As soon as you've been across the loose surface, you're bringing that onto the tarmac as well. Mix it all together with the rain. It is very slippy indeed. This is O'Donovan's view. Hard on the power. Plunges downhill. Onto his last lap, though, goes Mark Higgins. For Albertec Racing, is this going to be his day of days? The National Centre for Motorsport Engineering students that run this car are going to cheer him to the echo as well. Godfrey and O'Donovan go to the Joker, sorry, go to Chesson's Drift as across the Joker is Higgins. And he stays ahead, does he? Yes, he does. Mark Higgins, it is, who leads the way. Onto Dover Slope, he comes. Julian Godfrey second, Ollie O'Donovan third, Steve Hill retiring in the background. But this has been a mighty effort. Mark Higgins leads for Albertec Racing. Here is Mike Manning battling on in the Subaru as he hits the loose at Chesson's Drift. So, Mark Higgins had that early brush with Liam Duran, but he looks as though he's going to come through and score a victory. Through Paddock he comes. Round two of the Toyo Tyres MSA British Rally Cross Championship is won by the Manxman. Mark Higgins, second, goes the way of Julian Godfrey. Ollie O'Donovan takes third. Jake Harris fourth ahead of Ollie Bennett and Mike Manning rounds out the top six. And Mark Higgins has laid down a marker here at Lytton Hill. Mark Higgins, your second only supercar race in the British Rallycross Championship. Really difficult conditions in the final. It's been a challenging day, but you must be delighted with victory. Yeah, no, it's great. It's good to get that monkey off our back, really. Um, we, we've had a good day. Started off badly on the first one, where I made a mistake on the Joker, but gradually been sort of building through there. Got a bit of a bash from Liam at the top of the hairpin. Uh, but it would have been very close if he'd stayed in it, but thankfully we had a good run to the finish and um, some good points in the bag. So a battle of survival in the final, but you must be really happy with second place. Yeah, no, very good points for the championship, so it keeps me still in the championship after two rounds, which is really good compared with last year. I was like well down after two rounds. So no, no real please. Yeah, as I said to you earlier today, um, we really need to finish on the podium. Third place is our strategy, we were very happy with that. I mean, I wasn't going to catch Mark, I think I may have had to pace the Julian, but uh, I opted to play safe. Happy with third place, really happy with that. So let's have a look at the championship. Two rounds in, four points separate Julian Godfrey from Mark Higgins. It's going to be tough this year. Steve Hill's third ahead of Ollie O'Donovan, then it's Roger Thomas and Kevin Proctor. Next time out, we're at Croft in North Yorkshire. Can local hero Kevin Proctor fight back?